let's go to the material. Maxwell created foundation used by Dr. Zenek to create non-radiating Zenek wave. His former student, Summerfield, contribution made Dr. Burroughs go to Seneca Lake experiment. Resulting publication of Dr. Burroughs points at error causing stop of progress till 1950, where Gobau presents his G-line named Gobau Summerfield G-line. In 1979, Hill and Waite made enough of progress for Dr. Corum, who in 2013 repeated Seneca Lake experiment from 1936. In 2017-2019, Visif Tesla Tower was built in Texas. In 1897, Tesla asked JP Morgan for help, while scrutinized by Thomas Edison. Soon, Tesla got support from Westinghouse. The Tesla Tower was built. After rejection by JP Morgan, tower was demolished in 1917. Tesla died in 1943 and only after his death he was announced an inventor of a radio. Marconi in 1901 established communication between England and Canada using surface wave, presumably Zenic wave. In 1909 he received Nobel Prize. In 1914 he built a station in Bolinas, California in a vision to provide energy and communication around the globe using surface wave. In 1819, U.S. government using RCA, the branch of government, to finish Marconi's dream. Marconi started to sue United States government for use of his technology in World War I. In 20th of July, 1937, Marconi dies. In 1943, Marconi writes to wireless technology is revoked by United States court. Purely political. No i tutaj przybliżamy się do wyjaśnienia końca cara i jego bandy. To też proszę wejść. Zaczym ja się tak? Wy, że nie chcecie, żeby u was byli sobie ci pochodzi na Paryż. Może być wam jak to pouczyca przyjadalić to, k czemu niezbieżno ta technologia wciąż bliżej i bliżej. The Zenic wave, Zenic surface wave, or a Summerfield Zenic surface wave, over a lossy earth it exists as an exact solution to Maxwell equation. And now let's go to explanation of electromagnetic wave phenomena. I will just touch the subject and more broad explanation will be provided in next video. Water can be restricted to flowing pipe at a desired direction, starting from the source. Electromagnetic wave can be free to propagate in space from given source and that wave is called EM, electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic wave can also be restricted, guided by pipe of various shape and that wave is called TEM, transverse electromagnetic wave. One more time, in technical language, in most transmission lines, the electric and magnetic fields point purely transverse to the direction of propagation. Such waves are called transverse electromagnetic or TEM waves, and such transmission lines are called TEM lines. Or maybe this is not true. Maybe it is opposite, huh? To avoid more confusion with what is what, here is some more explanation. Чтобы избежать путаницы, что с чем есть, 
здесь есть некоторые объяснения. Light is also electromagnetic wave and can be guided by water or liquid too. This occurs because there's a difference between the index of refraction of the guide material, here propylene glycol, and the outside, air in this case. Recall that any time light strikes a surface, it can either be absorbed by the material, reflected from it, or pass into and through it, the latter we call refraction. It's easier to see from a top view. Reflection and refraction can happen at the same time, but if a light ray hits the surface at an angle greater than the critical angle, it will be completely reflected and not refracted. That's wonderful. Amazing. It does this because of total internal reflection. As the light enters the stream, it is reflected as soon as it hits the interface between air and liquid. You can see here the first reflection, and then the second, and the third. Waveguides can look like a pipe, or be rectangular, or just flat. So important is the medium that is making waveguide, or its special form, the interface. Water can flow on the flat surface with air above it. So a surface wave. However, a surface wave and its special form, a zenic wave, can flow around the earth up and downwards, having two boundaries, air and earth, creating waveguide flat guiding structure called interface. Ну сейчас, ребята, наступаем. Кому на что? А, это про кого? Ну сказочный. Это уже два месяца, как в бункере прячется. В этой концепции нам нужны две важные тесла. И мы посылаем электричество с точки А в точку Б, используя вертикально поляризованную волну в поперечном магнитном режиме ТМ, которая без никакого отражения и преломения садится в интерфейсе между Землей и воздухом под углом Брустера. Раз эта волна садилась в интерфейсе между Землей и воздухом, этой волны нет в воздухе, и невозможно изучить. Из-за низкой частоты потери на закон обратных квадратов минимальные. В точке B вторая такая же катушка Тесла работает как приемник, но есть маленькие «но». Любая структура может работать как приемная катушка Тесла, если мы передатчиком заставим ей быть в резонансе. Все зависит от угла Броустера или то, что я объясняю попозже, регулированного угла наклона волны. В таком случае... Структура, которая является целью, может потерпеть, скажем, трагическую неудачу. Многофазная структура передачка в первом установляет связь, а модуляционный сигнал на ней наносит определенный ожидаемый или иногда вообще неожиданный приемной структурой эффект. My dielectric along with air creates an interface, and my hand acts as the ground. Although there is no direct connection between the light bulb and my hand, it is a capacitive reactive coupling that is taking place. Distilled water. If this is the goal, transfers electromagnetic wave with a TE or TM mode could be applied to different things. So, if let's say we are right now in America, but we want to send electrical energy to Russia, no problem. But if we want to send the energy to the ocean, no problem. So, see how it's possible, you look at it, but shit. 